unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Father, we worship you this morning. We praise you. We bow humbly before you, Lord. And we ask that you would breathe upon us your Holy Spirit. Lift us, Lord, to a place where we can see the glory that you have bestowed on this place and in our hearts. Be in our very service, in our very midst today as we worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. Tis so sweet to, to trust in Jesus. It's found in your hymn book in number 524, and it might be on the screen as well. So join in with us. We're going to sing all four verses. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just Jesus. 
Church, I just wanted to acknowledge the presence this morning of um, Sister Hill in our midst. She's back to visit with us from California and her lovely daughter, Brenda. And we just want to acknowledge them as we greet each other. Let's be sure and greet them, too. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. It's a pleasure seeing you all here today, but uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our distinguished guest today. All right, for the following individuals, I would like to welcome Teandra Givens, 
um, Stephanie Davis, Aaron Jackson, Julian Grant, and Samuel Robert. And at this time, I would ask any other guests that are here with us today to stand. All right. We welcome you. We welcome you all as well. And now we just want to take time, you know, in fellowship and greet each other. Give everybody a warm smile, a nice big hug, and a nice firm handshake to everybody. And uh, everybody enjoy the Sabbath. <laughs> Good morning again, church. I have to pause to inject a moment of sadness into our celebration this morning, in as much as um, the son of Deacon Dawson passed um, late last week or earlier this week, Monday, just Monday of this week. And um, we just want you to keep that family in prayer. Um, I, I recognize this as an attack on our church early on, and it's a sustained and continuous one. I want you to be praying for our church as well. Because we need to rebuke Satan when he attacks us. There's power in our prayers. Pray.
pray with me for Deacon Dawson and his family and for our church, which, as we can see, has had a run of difficult times here lately with uh, people passing. At this time, we're going to have several announcements. Good morning, City Temple. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We come to you on behalf of City Temple Women's Ministries Department. We want to invite all of the ladies, all of our ladies, to join us immediately after 11 o'clock, well, divine worship. Join us immediately after for prayer and praise. We have been praying over our calendar, and we know the Lord has been blessing you. So we want to hear your testimonies. Join us immediately after for a brief time of prayer and praise. And next Sabbath, ladies, this is exciting. So I want you to hold on tight, because next Sabbath we resume our book club. We haven't been together in, in quite a while, so it's time for us to get together. Do you remember what a wonderful time we had fellowshipping last time? It was about six weeks ago. So get your book, bring a sack lunch, and we are going to revisit our book, The Power of a Praying Woman. So next Sabbath, right after Divine Worship, we're going to have a little lunch, and we're going to get back into our wonderful book, The Power of a Praying Woman. And we hope to see each and every one of you out here next Sabbath. Chapters 2 through 6. And remember, immediately after service today, under the balcony, oh, under the balcony for prayer and praise. Have a blessed Sabbath. And now, church, we're going to have an announcement from our, VB, our children's ministry about VBS beginning tomorrow from Zelda Solomon. Good morning, everyone. I am standing in for our children's ministry leader. And it's time for the main event. We have been working so hard for our vacation Bible school. And it starts on Monday. We are so excited. Our station leaders are ready. Our lunch staff is ready. Our crew leaders are ready. Our safari celebration leader is ready. Our sing, roar, and play is ready. We're ready for Stampede Sport out in the parking lot. Oh, we're going to have a roar, roaring good time. We have been working so hard. And what I want you to do, church, is pray is pray and pray some more because this is not just a main event it is an evangelistic effort our goal is to bring children closer to jesus we want them to learn that when life is wild god is good when life is unfair God is good. When life changes, God is good. We want that thing to just immerse our children so that then when they leave for those four days, if they haven't learned anything else in our safari journey, they will know that God is good. Isn't he good, church? So we want you to pray for those four days. Pray that children will come 
that they will hear the message that God has to give them. So pray. We have registration forms right there in the lobby for those who are visiting here. We saw some children in Sabbath school who were visiting. We want them to come too if they're here for the week. So get your registration form and give it to Miss Z or Miss O or Miss B. Anyone that's here, we would like to have as many. We have about maybe about 30 that have already pre-registered. So we want Monday for them to step into the safari journey and to get going because we start promptly at 9 o'clock. Those of you who know our staff, we're meeting at 12 noon tomorrow right under the Kuwa tree. You don't want to miss it. Thank you, church. How many of you know God to be holy? Amen. I saw about three people. How many of you know God to be righteous? Amen. How many of you know God to be faithful? Amen. Amen. We're just going to sing a simple song called All I, I Call You Faithful. So if you know it, sing it with us and just worship with us. Amen.
we've reached a stage in our service for tithes and offering. And I did learn something this week. We always talk about tithes. But do you know that offerings are just as important? Tithes and offering. The Bible says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and in offerings? So, yes, a tithe is 10%. And offerings is something that you give to the Lord because he continues to bless you. Will the officers please stand? Let's bow our heads. Father, as we come to collect these offerings for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, may we return them willingly to you, that you will continue to bless us, we pray. For Christ's sake, amen. Blessings and blessings and glory and honor and honor they all they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the thing for the Church, in the song, we heard adjectives that describe our God. We heard faithful, holy, righteous, awesome, all that. We do serve an awesome God. This morning, we want to petition him on behalf of all of us. And I want everyone to be praying in their hearts this morning, too, because we all have things that we hold up before Jesus in private. And he's a private God and a public God. We can worship him both ways. And so if you would like to join us down front, then of course you may. Uh, but those uh, who choose not to, uh, please 
as many as can, let's kneel in place, and we're going to petition him for all our needs this morning, and we're going to praise him for all his benefits. Shall we bow our heads, please? Our Father in heaven, we are grateful this morning to be able to bow before you again. Father, if there is a high point of even a day of high praise like this one, it is this moment when we bow our heads before you and thank you for your marvelous grace. Thank you for your great sacrifice for us. Thank you, Lord, for being accessible and available to sinners. Lord, we thank you this morning for the sunshine. We thank you, Lord, for safe transportation here this morning. We thank you for our visitors. We thank you, Lord, for young people who worship with us today. We thank you for our visitors from California. Lord, we are just grateful for all your benefits this morning. Father, we remember those who still have heavy hearts. We know that you have been with them through this trial. But we ask you, Lord, to lift their spirits today in special ways that only you can do. We ask you, Lord, to cheer their hearts, those who have lost loved ones, Father, we remember especially the Flags, the Dawsons. Lord, we remember the family of Sister Robin, so recently bereft. Father, each of these has their own special needs. Only you know them, Lord, and we ask you to draw near to them and provide them even now. Father, we sometimes feel as though we're under attack and we know how you treated the enemy whenever he presented himself before you. You told him to get behind you and so this morning in the name of Jesus we rebuke him Lord. We command him in your name for we have no power but in your name we command him to get behind us. Lord clear a path for us to resume our mission in this neighborhood in the sphere of your opinion. We ask forgiveness of our sins, Lord, because without it, what strength have we even to petition you? And so, please, forgive our sins, Lord. Fill our hearts with love for you. Fill our hearts with love for each other. Make us, Lord, one in you. And then, Father, when you are seen parting the clouds and returning for your children all around this world, return for us here too at City Temple. Father, we ask these things in the name of thy darling son, Jesus, and for his sake. Amen and amen. Consume me, Sweet perfume, dear Oslo presence, fills this room. This is holy ground. 
Amen. It's time for our children's story. And so we're going to ask all the little ones to come forward. At this time, we collect a small offering, and that offering is used to further the work of Christian education. So please hold your money high, and the children will come and get it. All our little ones down front, please. We have some dollars over there. And we have a dollar over here. We have a dollar over here under the balcony. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. This morning, I want to read out some words of Jesus that we call the Beatitudes. In this passage in Matthew, Jesus' gospel says that his followers are blessed. It's hard to understand what that word blessed means. You might think of it as meaning happy, favored, or wonderful, special. Jesus explains it best in the Beatitudes. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went upon a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and say all kinds of mean things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because your reward is great in heaven, for the same way the prophets who came before you. Now, isn't that surprising? Jesus said that his followers were blessed, especially even when they had great troubles. That's hard to understand, isn't it? I'll try to explain it in a minute. So imagine an old, rusty tin can. It doesn't sound like it'll be very important, but inside the tin can, there's lots of gold and jewelry. This ordinary tin can hold something very special inside. What if I knocked the can over? What if I rolled all over it with marker? Would it be any less special? What if we all laughed at the can and made fun of it? It wouldn't become any less special or important. This tin is wonderfully blessed because it has such an important treasure inside, just like we all hold Jesus inside of us. As followers of Jesus, we are greatly blessed. People may make fun of us, even hurt us, but no matter what happens to us, we are greatly blessed because God's love and his life is right inside of us. We have been greatly blessed forever because of Jesus, and we will be in his love and care forever and ever. 
Can I have a boy and girl to pray? We'll let ladies go first. Everybody, bow your heads until dry. Jesus, please help everyone in Dance of Sin where we learn today. And to go with us throughout our lives. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. To see you are beautiful day. Yes, Jesus to take care of us. And our colors need you. Amen. 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 Everyone can go back to their seats. morning and happy Sabbath. My name, is Ch- My name is Chase Martin. Our scripture reading will be taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verse um, 32 to 34. Please stand. And what shall I more say, for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, wait, Gideon of, of um, Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and, the, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness, um, were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to to fight the armies of the aliens. May the Lord have, um, add a rich blessing and hearing to this doing of the word. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Chief. <laughs> for the water so my soul longeth after thee you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee Oh, you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone make my spirit kneel. You alone are my heart's desire and I love. To worship thee. I love you more than gold or silver. Only you can satisfy. 
you, O oh Lord, are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. Oh, you alone are my strength, my shield. To you May my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Oh, you alone are my strength, Lord. You are my shield to you alone may my spirit yield you alone you alone are my heart's my heart's desire and I long to worship thee and I long to worship thee, and I long to worship thee, and I long to worship Amen. Our music has been beautiful this morning, has it not? I don't know what we're going to have to follow all of this with. This morning, our speaker of the hour is none other than our own Elder Sylvanus E. Carey. This is a man I have grown to love and deeply respect over the years not just for the man, for the figure he is in our church and for his position of obvious respect in his own family, but because of the deep spiritual insights that he brings us. Whenever this man speaks, listen carefully. There will be something there that God has put there just for you. It's been my experience every time I've heard him, and I invite you to listen this morning with a very careful listening ear. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I don't know about you. I am excited to share with you the word of God this morning. I was trying to get a story to introduce today's topic, a topic that is really dear to my heart as an Adventist. I came across this story that I will share with you. It's the story about a man named Jack. He was walking along a steep cliff one day when he accidentally got close to the edge and he fell. On his way down, he grabbed the branch, which temporarily stopped his falling all the way down. He looked down and found out that if he had went all the way down, he would have fallen almost a thousand feet below. 
he could not hang onto this branch for too long. There was nowhere or no one to help him. His life was at stake. So Jack began to yell. He was yelling for help, hoping that someone passing by would hear him and lower a rope or something to get him off the cliff. He kept yelling, Help! Help! Is there anyone there? Help! He yelled for a long time, but no one had him. He was about to give up when he had a voice. Jack, Jack, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I am down here. I can't see you, Jack. Are you all right? Yes, but who are you? And where are you? I am the Lord, Jack. I am everywhere, the Lord said. You mean you are God? That's me. God, please help me. I promise you, if you get me out of this place, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Do everything you can. I promise you, I will be a nice person from now on. Easy on your promise, Jack. He had. Let's go off from there. Then we can talk about all the promises you are given. Now, here is what I want you to do. Listen and listen carefully. I will do anything you want me to do, Lord. Just tell me what to do. Okay. Are you ready? Are you listening? Yes. Let go of the branch. What? I said, let go of the branch. Just trust me. Let go. There was a long silence. Finally, Jack yelled, Help! Help! Is there any other person there? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you. You have given us a word for today about faith. Faith is real. This is one of the best two we need to travel on this journey to the kingdom. We pray that you be with us today as we go through your word to see what faith is really is. At the end of this sermon, we pray that you will take all the honor, all the praises. If there is any way the enemy have set aside to bring confusion within your people, to let us not listening or getting the meaning of what today's message is. We pray that you seal it in Jesus' name. Bless us as we continue our sermon today that at the end of the day we will give you praise and we worship you as our God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our message today is taken from the book of Hebrew, chapter 11. The young guy that uh, had our Bible reading did a very good job. Can we say amen? The book of Hebrew is an interesting book. It is full of stories of powerful men of God who actually had one thing in common about their belief and what God was to them. I 
I'm going to read the same Bible version that we just read for our Bible reading. And what more shall I say for the time who fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Japheth and also David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdom, walked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the age of sword, out of weakness we are made strong, became violent in battle, torn fleet the armies of the aliens. There was one particular passage that really struck me when I was going through this passage. These men of God, they were not originally made what they became. The Bible said here, out of weakness, let me repeat that, out of weakness, we are made strong. Out of weakness, they were made strong. Just like each and every one of us. When we listen to God, regardless what our position is, He will use us the way He feels to use us. Amen? I will give you all a few names by the end of the message, you all will be able to identify what these people have in common. One of them is Daniel. We all know the story of Daniel. We know the story of Shadrach. We know the story of Meshach and Abednego. We know the story of Abraham, Peter, the woman with issue of blood. All these individuals are a standing people that had one thing in common. Let's turn to our Bible in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. This passage says, So then faith comes by hearing, by the word of God. Faith then comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You might be thinking, how do I obtain this word faith? How do I get it? How did these people that God have chosen and even bless them just for trusting him and believing in him? How did they? They had it just like we are hearing about their names today. They believed the message. They walked on it. They became mighty warriors of God. If we are determined to make it into the kingdom of God, if our goal is to get to the kingdom, to heaven, faith is one of the strongest tools that we must obtain in order to embark on this journey. I was telling uh, our chief elder in the, um, in the room, I said, for almost the enemy knows how to get on you, especially when you are devoted to do Christ's work. I've been battling with my voice. I wasn't having any fever, but I was losing my voice. I said, how can this happen? The only thing that came to my mind was about Moses. God called Moses. I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. You tell Pharaoh exactly what I have instructed you to do. Moses was marveled. 
He said, I am a stammerer. I cannot even speak. How can I go to Pharaoh? What am I going to tell Pharaoh? Pharaoh told him, uh, the Lord told him, I am God. I will put in your mouth what you need to tell your people. So that's the word that I used this week. I said, I'm not going to think about my voice. I have been called to give this message. I know by the grace of God, he will give me the strength to deliver it in Jesus' name. Faith must come from your heart. It must come from the heart. In Romans 10, 10, 10 verse 10, chapter 10 verse 10. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Faith in Christ is real. Let us visit some of the stories of the first people that I mentioned earlier. Daniel was one of them. We all know that the only reason Daniel was able to come out of the lion's den alive was his faith in God. He had a strong faith with his heavenly father that regardless what happened, he would deliver him. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, walked out of the fire furnace alive because of their faith, their unshakable faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible also made a mention in Hebrew chapter 10, 35 to 36. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. We cannot talk about faith without discussing the story of Abraham. Even in our Sabbath school lesson this morning, we can find out that there was a set of people God chose to bless and to bless all the other nations on their behalf just because of their trust, their confidence, and their faith in their Creator. Every believing Christian must have the desire to walk in faith the way Abraham did in order to enjoy the help and the intervention of God. God is telling us that the only way you can come close to him, the only way you can get any answer from him, the only way you can get any result from him, is to have faith on who he is. God declared Abraham the father of many nations. The Bible made this clear that Abraham was not justified by keeping just the law. He was justified by believing in God and his promise and obeying his instructions. I made mention earlier that at the end of the lesson, you will find out one thing, or will I call it, one of the secrets of these permanent men of God that made them be who they were in the presence of God.
Abraham was a man of faith. He chose to believe God. He depended on him. Even if it doesn't make sense to him, that doesn't matter. We all know the story of Abraham. Regardless of what he went through, offering his son Isaac for a sacrifice, his old age, the wife Sarah, the condition of her, bearing a child, all those things did not deter him from believing in God and having his faith trusted in him. In Romans, <clears throat> sorry, in Romans 4, 17, 21, I'll read. I say, it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver in his faith. He did not waver in God's promises of God through unbelief, but he strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that whatever he had promised him, he was able to perform. This is the kind of faith our Lord wants from us. We have to trust him. If he asks us to go, we have to go with that asking question. This causes one to wonder, who is Abraham that God made such promises to him? What is special about him? How did he get to the point where he was called a man of faith, a friend of God, one who almost all nations, he became the father of all nations. Because Abraham was a man like you and me. Abraham, the question is, who is Abraham? He said, Abraham was a man like you and I, born of a man and a woman, just like you and I. However, he became a friend of God and a trusted and respected man. This is the this is because this is the only reason because he chose to believe in God, the word of God, and claim the identity that God had given to him. He chose to obey God's instruction, whether it made any sense to him or not. Abraham walk with God is an excellent example of the type of relationship the Lord wants to have with you and I. The example of Abraham, his trust in God, his unwavering faith in him, that is what the Lord wants with you and I. 
It is not, there was nothing very special that he did. Just in Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1, he said that faith, we acquire faith just by hearing and listening to the word of God. The same thing every hand did. That's how he built his faith. He had about God. He believed him. He trusted in him. He gave his life. Regardless of whatever is going on around him, he trusted God. God tested them and found out that he really trusted him. He made him his friend. Abraham did not, he did not consider the glaring facts concerning his or his wife's ability to bear children. According to nature, their fruitful organs were dead. What an every average man today will call a hopeless situation. Even at that, even at his age, even at Sarah's condition, his faith never wavered. He believed in God. How many of us have found ourselves in a hopeless situation? I had the elder earlier said, what we have been going through. We have some of our members that are really hurting. We've lost some of our dear friends, our colleagues, people that we have served with. Most of the time, the enemy try to do those things to weaken our faith. We should not allow that to happen. As Christians, we must avoid focusing our thoughts on the negative reports from doctors, friends, families, or life in general concerning any issue, problem we might face. Why me? Why should I, I said earlier that this week I wasn't feeling the way I have been feeling all this time. I thought I have gone for my checkup for the year. The doctor told me I'll see you in another year. I was happy. I said, okay, I'm doing okay. If you have to see me in another year, that means I'm doing okay. And the very day that I have to speak, I was sounding like a broken uh, record. I did not give up. Those things should not deter us. I had the determination and the faith that even if I had to crawl to church today to deliver this message, that's exactly what I need to do. We don't have to allow all these <clears throat> distractions wear us down. When we put our thoughts on those issues, it weakens our faith. When we concentrate on the issue instead of focusing on Jesus Christ, who is our maker and our faith should be. It is only through Christ that you will obtain the type of faith that is being recorded. Peter was able to walk on water. 
because of his faith in Christ. I love the story of Peter because it gives us a real example of what happens when we lose our faith and take our eyes off the prize. The moment Peter removed his faith in Christ and focused on the storm ranging around him, that his faith started shaking. The moment he, he removed his faith in Christ and focused on the storm, his success was hindered. To look at Christ, to look at Jesus Christ, is to look at everything. Because in him, we find everything that our life needs. We must look at him regardless of any circumstances which we find ourselves. God is with us. Believing in him and trusting him like Abraham did is the right way to go. After all these examples, people may still wonder, what is faith? I even went to Ellen G. White's writing to see what she was um, reporting or writing about faith. She confirmed Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 as one of the best definitions of what faith is. Hebrew 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrew 11.6 says, But without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Brothers and sisters, I have a good news for you. Faith is real. Matthew 17, 20, so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for I shall, surely, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing, nothing will be impossible for you. Hebrew 11.6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to him, to God, must believe that he is that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. As followers of Christ, we are called to a life of faith. All the men and women whose names are recorded in the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, won God's approval because of their faith in him. In the book of James, chapter 2, James educates us on the key ingredients to faith. He states, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says his faith if someone has faith but does not have work, can faith save him? If a brother or a sister is naked and distant of a daily food, and one of you says to him, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give, in, give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Does also faith by itself if it does not have works? A dead. What is he saying? Just for the fact that we say, I have faith, 
or I believe something is not sufficient enough. We'll find out in a minute. But someone say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You believe there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know a foolish man that faith without work is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his work? And by works, faith was made perfect. In the book of Mark, chapter 25, verse 34. If there is nothing you get out of this message today, you should be able to find out that through the woman or the women that had the issue of blood, that faith works hand in hand with work. You cannot just say you have faith without work. The Bible says that faith without work is what? Is there. Mark, tw- Mark 5, 25, 34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from Many physicians, she has spent all that she had and was no better, rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I only, if only I may touch him, his clothes, I shall be made well. If only I can get myself out of my house together and go to Jesus when I heard about him. I have the faith, I have the belief within me that I will be made whole. Immediately the fountain of blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the infections or inflictions, sorry. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched me or who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude throwing you and say, who touched you? And he looked around to see who had done this. But the woman, fearingly, trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell on Jesus' feet. And she told him, that she was the one that touched him. He said he told him nothing but the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Faith without what? The question is, in preparing this lesson, in preparing for this lesson, I began to wonder when and at what point did her faith please God enough to make her whole or heal her? How did, how did it happen? When did it start? 
what actually took place. It started in her mind in what she believed in and became confirmed through, his, through her work. She was at home when she heard about Christ. She made up her mind. I don't have anything else to lose. All the doctors have given up on me. The only thing I have to do is to take off my bags. Even though it is a long journey, I will make my way to Christ. She believed within her that once I get to Christ, if I only touch the hem of her garment, that she will be made whole or that she will be well. That is faith. Not note what she said. I believe if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. But when this thought came to her mind, she was not instantly healed at the point. She made up her mind from her house. She had it planned out. She believed that when he gets up and goes to Christ and touch the hem of her, his garment, that she will be made well. At that time, even though she had faith, she was still sick. So the point, the point is, at what point of time did she finally get the full circle of faith that really made her well. But when this thought came to, the, to her mind, she, she was not instantly healed at the point. She was still sick, just, just believing in something is not enough to complete your faith. If you really believe in it, then you must act or walk upon that belief. Let me repeat that again. For her, believing that this is exactly what I'm going to do. She had the faith. She believed that when she go to Christ, that the only thing he would do is this. When you get up from your seat and you come to the altar, you have been in pain. You, you coming in here to ask God for help. It is not the altar you are touching or the altar you are kneeling in that will heal you. Listen to what Christ told the lady. Just believing something is not enough. If you really believe it, then you must act and work upon it. The Bible does not give us all the details of what the women suffered and endured to get to Jesus. Remember, she had been sick for 12 years. Every doctor has given up on her. Brothers and sisters, her faith began by painting a picture in her mind of her hand touching the garment of Christ. When she believed and actually walked on it, can you imagine what she went through just to get to him or just to try to get to touch his garment? Think about it. The pain, the discouragement, her friends telling her, you don't need to go on this journey. You know how much you have tried. This is a hopeless situation. There is nothing you can do about it. 
the long journey. Even getting there, it wasn't easy for her to push her way through to see Christ. Real faith is not just believing you can and planning to make it happen. We must have the heart to fight and press on when the going gets tough. After all the adversity and hardship, she fought and fought and fought, and finally her faith come to a full circle when she was able to touch the garment that she had pictured in her mind, that she had calculated, she now holds the garment in her hand. And Jesus affirmed her by saying, your faith has made you well. Listen to this. The Bible did not tell us that Christ told her that the, her, the hem of his garment that he touched was what made her whole. The Bible didn't say that. The Bible said, Lady, woman, your faith has made you whole. But he said, your faith that grew and materialized through every step and struggle you went through to get to Jesus. What point am I trying to make? Even though we believe on something, It's not enough for our faith to come to a full circle. If you believe that God is going to heal you, you have to do the work. Faith without work is dead. A good example, I was really happy with the woman of issue of blood. We sing it in songs. We use it in prayer. That what actually made her well was touching the hammer or the, the hem of Christ's garment. No. What the Bible tells us is that it was not Christ's garment or the hem of his garment that made her whole. But what? faith. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen, church. Your faith has made you well. We all have testimonies of times when we've reached out to Christ in faith and he has answered us. I certainly do. And I hope that this week as we go about our daily work that we will keep in our minds that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards our faith. when We believe in him and then act. On that faith, he meets us. He reaches out to us. And he has all power. He's not like us. You can't reach out to Jeff and say, help me here. Jeff can't help. But Jesus can. Um, I want just, I want just for a moment to give our church a chance to respond to this message about faith. 
The spirit of prophecy says at no time should we ever present God's word without giving people an opportunity to respond. And so what I would like to do is open the, jo the doors of the church and give you an opportunity. If this message has touched you, if God's Holy Spirit has reached you and touched your heart and made it clear that faith without works is dead and that you need to respond to him, that's what starts our faith. It's like a, it's like the gasoline. You can have the fastest car in the world. No gas in it. Won't go. It's the fuel that drives our faith. And if this afternoon you have a sense that you need to commit your life to him, I just want to give you that opportunity at this point to respond to this message about faith. Is there one? Let us treasure these precious promises in our heart this week as we go about our daily work. There's a song that's usually sung in church, and the words are like this. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my sins away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. Let's stand for prayer. Father God, we bless your name that you're able to bring us here today. And as we separate for a while, we just ask for your Holy Spirit to be with us. We pray for forgiveness of sins and a closer walk with you. And now may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you all the days of your life. For Christ's sake, amen. Please be seated.